lot of years, praise the Lord, a lot of years, and she's always been the same. Thinking back today, years ago, when me and my two sons were in Wilmington, and my youngest son, Brandon, spotted Pastor Powell way, it could have been a half a block away. And he said, Mom, there's Pastor Powell. I'm going to run over there, and I'm going to give her a hug. You in Ross store. And we couldn't keep up with them, both of my sons. They love Pastor Powell, yes. love her members. I love coming here. Yes. I do. I, I enjoy it so much because your members treat me so well. Right. And it comes from the head, and it moves on down. And I know you're sitting down, and you're resting, and you think you're getting ready to get in the Word. But before you eat, don't you say your grace? Yes, ma'am. Now let's stand up and say grace. <laughs> And first, just thank God for the word. So thank you for the word. Thank you for showing me myself. Thank you for encouraging, for edifying and building up. God, we thank you for blessing your word on tonight. We thank you for every listening ear. We thank you for filling this house with your presence and for people who want to be here that hear from heaven. We thank you right now, God, for the victory. We thank you for the encouragement. We thank you for the spirit of joy. We thank you for the spirit of peace, the spirit of healing. We thank you for tearing down strongholds in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord. We give you the glory, of Lord, for every word that come out of this vessel's mouth. In Jesus' name, you said your word will not return void. It will accomplish what it set it out to do. And we take you at your word tonight. Bless your little servant. Bless everyone here. Bless the shepherd of this house. Bless the ones who desire to be here but could not make it. And we give your name all the honor, all of the glory and the praise. Everybody give God a big hand here. Oh, he's so worthy. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless his name. Now you may be seated. Praise God. I just thank God for being here. I cannot say it enough. Thank God for hearing about Pastor Powell and her journey to Israel. I think it was just so beautiful, a place I would love to go. And you know what, Pastor Powell, I talk with A-Robs every day. I teach them online how to speak English. I said, Lord, I hope I'm doing the right thing. Amen. But they are dedicated. They are sincerely dedicated. They will fast from sun up to sundown. And the temperature gets up to about 126 degrees over there in the summertime. And it's very hot. And the women dressed all up in their black and their covering, but they journey on. And they read that Holy Quran from front to the back when they're on that fast. Now they're worshiping their God. The nation of Islam came from Christianity. And but Muhammad came after he didn't like what that was being said, you know, from here. So he came along and he said he was gonna change things up, make it their way, their way and their God. But they do believe in praying. And I said, you know what? You know, this, this is a personal walk. It's personal. Holiness runs deep. And it's more to just praying and coming to church and singing and having a good time. I love doing all of that. That's what I live for. But when the benediction, after the benediction is being said, and when we go out among these tests and these trials and these temptations, the question is, will we be able to stand? So we have to have something on the inside. Our prayers cannot be in vain. Our fasting cannot be in vain. We have to have something and someone on the inside who, that would keep us in these last and wicked days. Have y'all noticed how wicked the world is becoming? It's wicked out here. Praise God. And we as a people of God, we really need to stick together. We need to love each other and most of all, love the Lord and pray and bind the devil together, fast together, turn down stronghold, and if need be, cast out a demon or two. That's the way we're supposed to be equipped. The Holy Ghost has given us everything we need to stand and to bear the infirmities of our weaker brothers and sisters. I said, this is the time for us to come together because we don't know when we're going to be caught up. Woo, glory. To meet him in the air. Praise God. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm aiming for every day. Just to be with Jesus and never have to walk in this old wickedness anymore. But in the meantime, while I'm here, I say, Lord, let me serve you and let me fight the good fight. Help me to preach the gospel. Not just preach it, but live it. Because living is what he's coming back for. Holy living. Preaching is good. But we got to have the goods on the inside. Praise God. Now, if you do have your Bibles, we will be getting in the Word. 
And I was during the week, in the last couple of weeks, when I was praying and preparing for this time and season, the Lord kept telling me, he said, encourage this house of God. Amen. Say they've been going through some stuff. Everybody have their individual test. Amen. Say they need to be encouraged. Build them up. Edify them through the word. Amen. Let them know that I'm with them and they can be strong and journey on. Praise God. Amen. Tell God thank you. Amen. Now just carry on with me through the scriptures because I'm going to stick with the word. And I pray that the Lord would bring it out the way he brought it out to me. And our, one of our first scripture references will be coming from the Old Testament. And it's just one scripture from this. And then we're going to go on to the New Testament. And that's in Joshua 1 and 9. When God was speaking to Joshua, say, have not I commanded thee. See, now forget about Joshua. This word is coming to us. Forget about your neighbor. I'm not going to tell you to turn and tell your neighbor anything. Just look to yourself. Say, it's me, Lord. Amen? It's me. And wherever this word is, put your name there on me or I. Nobody else's. We're not looking for anybody else's shortcomings tonight. We're here to be encouraged and to be cleaned up some more so we can journey on. Praise God. He said, have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. So be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. Now, these people didn't even have the Holy Ghost. My goodness, ain't that right? They knew of God. They worshiped God. They had his presence around them. But they didn't have that fire of God that was spoken in Acts, the second chapter. And he was telling them, be strong. He said to Joshua on a mission, several missions. If you read through the chapters of Joshua, they went through some stuff. But he was telling them at the very beginning, he said, did not tell you, be strong. Be a good coach. So don't you be afraid. Don't you even get this hearted and dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with you. I'm with you. I don't care what you go through. I don't care how hard it might get. You're going to see giants. You're going to see a lot of stuff. But you'll be strong. And you'll be encouraged. Because I'm with you. That last part of that scripture. Say, I God is with thee. Wheresoever thou goest. So you see that word, wheresoever. That means everywhere. Through everything. Through every situation. Through every circumstance. But there were some conditions. He was not going to walk with them. If they did not walk with him. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So you keep this, let's keep this first scripture here in our hearts. And then we're going to go on down here to Romans, the eighth chapter, beginning at verse 21 to 22 to 23. And then we're going to move on down to verse 34. Now I'll give you time to get there. And you know the topic is be strong and journey on. You say, What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? Now let's make it personal. Say, what shall I then say to these things? If God be for me, who can be against me? I got God. I got Jesus. You don't stand a chance. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. And it went on to verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him? Also freely give us all things. Jesus on the cross died, shed his blood, suffered for things and sins that he did not commit. But he was there for love's sake. He was there for my sake. He was there for your sake. He stood the test so that we could be grafted in. He said, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justified. Say, who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also make it intercession for us. That was the purpose of Jesus' pain, to make intercession for us. So we already have the king. We already have Jesus, praise God, interceding for us. I don't care how rocky that road gets. And then sometimes when we're going through stuff, seem like we're walking through the mud. We're going, but we're going slow. Amen. Seem like it's just not moving fast enough. Tests come one after the other. Oh, Louie, try to gang up on us. If it's not one thing, it's another. Praise God. If you're not going through in your household, here comes the job. That's and if right, you're not right. going through in the job, here comes the church family. That's praise right, God. That's right. If it's one thing, it's another. Yeah. But what did God tell us? Be strong. Right. And journey on. Praise God. God wants some strong soldiers. 
He doesn't need, he can't, he can't, can't deal with no crybabies now. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. No, he already made provisions for us to be strong. We just have to believe his word and accept it and obey it, praise God. But he, he can't use a weak soldier. Uh-uh. Every time something come out, I just can't make it. See, that's just so hard. It's just too much for me. They always doing this. They always doing. That. I'm always going through. You're gonna always go through. They that live godly in Christ, you're gonna suffer persecution. We're gonna have sickness sometime, but God heals. We're gonna have trouble sometime, but trouble don't last our way. We will lose loved ones, but God said He took the sting right on out of death. He gave us strength to journey on. So we are unexcusable. He's given us what we need for the journey. Praise God. In verse, we're gonna move on down here to verse. 30, what is that? 36, 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Ask yourself, what's going to separate me from God? What will it take to separate me from God? Check your own self out. Say distress. Will it take some little trouble to separate me from God? Distress? Depression? We don't get depressed because God has given us his word mm -hmm. to build us back up. No, I'm not judging. I'm telling you, it's right here. It's right here. A persecution, we can stand being talked about and lied on right. if we do what the Lord says. Right. If he, you know, Even if you're not Holy Ghost filled, obey his word, and he'll give you strength to stand. Mm -hmm. Can we handle the truth? Can we stand the test? Can we journey on? Say, or famine, times when you have to do without. Most of the time when we see the word famine, we think about lack of food. But famine means lack of a lot of things. It could be lack of the word of God. There aren't many real prophets these days. There aren't many real people who are preaching the truth. You're blessed to have a pastor who will let you know, look, this is the way it is and that's the way it's going to be. Somebody got to stand for holiness. Amen? Praise God. Famine and a lot of things. Famine of money. Famine. Just famine. No love. No understanding. No respect. You can't go anywhere and turn around. Have y'all ever been in that situation where it seemed like you just by yourself yeah. when trouble comes? <laughs> See, wait, on the same note, will this separate me? Is it worthy to separate me from God? Or nakedness, do it out again, not being clothed, not being sheltered. Praise God. Peril, danger, uh -huh. or sword, when you're being cut from the left and the right? Jesus. Will that separate me from God? Is he worth me holding on to? Jesus. Is the blood that he shed worth me going through and standing the test for God's glory? Mm -hmm. Somebody tell God thank you. Thank you Lord. Now, as it is written, for thy sake, we killed all the day long. Mm -hmm. We're counted as sheep for the slaughter. We're different. We're peculiar. Don't expect it to be easy, but expect to have joy when times are not easy. Because we're looking to the author and the finisher of our faith. And we go to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. He tells you. He said, looking unto him. He was the author, the beginning and the end of our faith. If he got you in the beginning, you know he's going to see you through the yeah. end. He's going to see you through the middle, praise yeah. God. So be strong and journey on, praise God. Whatever your journey may be, let it end in holiness and righteousness. To see the kingdom of God and see God's face in peace. Praise him and thank him. Thank oh, the word is coming in. Thank you. Oh, bless him. We killed all the day long. We counted the sheep for the slaughter. But the good news is in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. More than conquerors. I preached a couple of years ago. The fight has already been fixed. We just have to show up and be obedient. Get in the ring anyhow. Praise God. Don't be afraid to trust God to take you through the battle. Get in the ring. Because you're not in there by yourself. You're not in the test by yourself. You're not in the trouble by yourself. If you're praying, even if you got yourself in that trouble, and when you offer yourself and ask God to have mercy, he will still show up for you. So don't beat yourself up because you made a mistake. Don't beat yourself up. Don't do that. Humble yourself. Ask for mercy and forgiveness and strength not to return to the same old dead works again. 
He'll see you through. He will pull you up. He will pick you up. I don't care how low that test was. You might think it was the worst thing that you could have ever done. Or the worst situation you could have ever been in. But mercy will plead your case. You don't have to be speaking in tongues. For mercy to plead your case. He wants us to be strong. He wants us to stand up. Walk holy. Do right. And serve him. Because he'll hold us on up until we get to the finish line. As long as we're seeking him. He said he's a rewarder. For those who diligently seek him. And we don't know what that reward is all about. We know some of it. Because we know in part. But when we get to the finish line of all of this. Of all of this trouble. My, 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 my. God I thank you. Of all of this wickedness that we see in this world today. And we stood faithful. At the finish line. My God, that's when we understand it. We don't understand it all now. Praise God. I went through some tests and trials 20 years ago. I'm just getting an understanding, but I say, God, I thank you. We don't look back in bitterness. We look forward in joy and say, God, I thank you for the journey. I thank you for the test. I thank you for the disappointment because it gave us strength. It was a gift for us to get to be to the place where we need to be in the Lord. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Oh, God, I thank you and I praise you. I'm teaching tonight. It's not hollering and jumping around yet. I don't know. I might start feeling good a little later. I don't know. But right now it's teaching. Praise God. Higher heights and deeper depths. Praise God and thank you. Oh, well, bless his name. Saying all these things. In all of this, how many of y'all going through something? You don't have to stand up and tell what it is, but you got your something, right? Everybody got something. Some of these somethings seem like they just will not go away. You wake up, it's there. You lay down, that test is there. All during the day, the test shows up. And even when you don't see the test, Satan will come and remind you, you know about this, trying to keep you down. But we got to remember God's word. And when that word get in our spirit, I don't care how hard that test is. I don't care how much he come back and try to remind you. The sword of the spirit, the word will come and knock him down on his feet. He won't be able to stand a chance. Keep giving the word. Fight with the word and be strong. God can't use a weak person. We're supposed to bear the infirmities of the weak. But just like Brother Philip saying, turn it around. So the lady's supposed to turn around. And we're supposed to be strong. And bearing the infirmities of some other weakness. Some other person. Just trying to see their way through this. Trying to get into the kingdom of God. We're not supposed to be the weakling all the time. We're not supposed to be the lean man all the time. Sitting there by the pool waiting on somebody to drag him or just kick him in. No! We're supposed to stand up and be strong. After Jesus healed him, he jumped up. He wasn't sitting down anymore, praise God, begging. He don't, God doesn't want us on spiritual welfare. No. No, that's bondage. He wants us happy, healthy, and serving the Lord. Praise God and thank him. Y'all with me tonight? Praise him. Oh, bless him. God, I thank you. Let's praise him. He cut on my heart. Yay, God, I thank you. The morning conference. Neither death, life, angels. And now you know Satan has angels too. He has them. And they come in the form of demonic spirits. If you're blessed to see them, it's because God knows you can handle it. But a lot of times they come in the form of people. And they have been plotting and planning. And how many of you know that it's when you're sleeping at night in your subconscious, that's when old Louie, if you didn't go to sleep praying and you have that word in it, that's when he comes in and try to infiltrate your dreams and infiltrate your mind because you're not watching. You didn't go to sleep with the word of God in your spirit and you didn't fall asleep praying so that the Holy Ghost or the praying saints prayers can block your mind from those demonic things and try to attack you in your mind. And sometimes you wake up angry and you don't know why. It's because Satan paid you a visit and there wasn't a keeper out the gate. The word wasn't there to stand for you. Prayer wasn't there to keep him out. And he picked the time and the season to catch you unaware. You wake up mad with your husband, mad with your children. Go to the job mad and upset. Don't even know why. Don't even know why. What kind of mood you in? Moods of demonic spirits. Saints of God, we're not up today and down tomorrow. 
We don't have moods. We don't. We don't. So what the world wrong with you? I don't know. I gotta have my coffee. Get your coffee, and you just get more energy to be even more, more upset, more angry. And then you start not liking people that never even said anything to you. And you wonder what the world you walk by. Sometimes it's what's. Oh, hey, how you doing? Is that God? It's not. It's not holiness. So we have to watch and pray. We have to watch. We can't journey. We can't take the journey with our eyes closed. Because you'll be blind then and you're going to bump into some stuff. You might even fall off the cliff. But we can't be strong if we're blind. We have to watch and pray and eat the word of God. In the morning when you rise up the first thing, grab the word and pray and say, Lord, put this word in my spirit. Take charge of my day, Lord. Bind that enemy and curse the works of Satan. Lord, lead me around these ditches. God, keep me out of the path of the wicked. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, whatever test I go through today, I thank you for keeping me. I thank you for giving me strength to stand. I thank you for joy. God, I thank you. Because you said you wouldn't let me down, God. And I'm dependent on your word, Lord. Be strong. That's how you get strong. And then when lunch time comes, you don't have to hang around with all these worldly people because they talk about you. And they're going to talk about their co-worker. But they're going to blame you when it all comes out. I've been there, praise God. Get somewhere quiet. Read your scripture. Now you don't even have to carry your Bible. You can have your tablet or your cell phone and scriptures on it or listen to a sermon. I record just about every sermon that I've heard lately. And if you were preaching, Pastor Paul, I'd be recording you because I need the word at all times, praise God. Build yourself up to go back on the battlefield. Build yourself up to be strong. Get built up through the word of God, praise God. So people can see the Jesus in you. They might be throwing rocks and hiding their hand, but they have to look back and say, Behold the God that's in her. Behold the God that's in him. I'm throwing rocks, but she's still standing. She didn't buckle up. She didn't break down. She didn't cry. That Jesus she talks about got to be real. Praise God. Give him some glory. I'm almost finished. Oh, let's praise him. God, encourage your people, Lord. Encourage them. Encourage them, Jesus. Oh, bless him. Holy Ghost, I thank you. And now let's go on over to Ephesians 6, verses 10 and 18. I'm just going to read them. We know what it is. Say, finally, my brethren, what does he say? Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his mouth. Now we cannot put on this whole armor. Without being filled with the Holy Ghost. It is what it is. That's right. But sometimes you know you can borrow somebody's clothes. So I'm going to use this because I need it. But somebody is praying for you. Everybody should have an anointed prayer warrior. And a real pastor that know how to reach heaven. Amen. Because they're praying and watching for your souls. And they know who's weak. They know, praise God, God has given them those eyes and those ears to know what you're going through. And prayer warriors, praise God. God shows us things. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You could be sitting at your desk working and a person's face will come up and you immediately start praying. And in dreams and in visions, God be giving us assignments. Say, pray for my daughter. Pray for my son. They're going through. The devil is after them, praise God. And you wonder, say, Lord, I thank you. All of a sudden, the test change. That's because somebody prayed for you. Yeah. You got to put on the whole armor. Everybody's not in, and is not suited up yet. God knows that. Yeah. One day it's going to click. One day all this teaching is going to click. Yeah. And you're going to realize what God is doing. And you're going to be in that armor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's a time and a season. And one day it's going to click. It had to click for me. I wasn't born speaking in tongues. I, when, I, mm -mm, when I came to True Vine, I was messed up. I, I, I was messed up. <laughs> I was messed up in the head. And I thought I had it going on until I heard the truth. The truth rescued me. Praise God. Amen. But I had a pastor that was patient with me. It chastised me. Slapped me around a little bit. And I didn't run away. I stayed. Because it was good for my soul, praise God. So the Lord was merciful towards me. And I thank God that he's merciful towards everybody. If he can be merciful merciful for one, he can show mercy for all. Amen? 
He said, "Cause we not you not wrestling against flesh and blood either. We all in a spiritual battle. Amen. Demons and they don't just fight the sanctified. <laughs> they just don't. Well, I believe her alone because she weak. No, he's still gonna come after you. That's why he's, we all have to watch and pray. You can sit down, son. Praise God. We all have to watch and pray. We all have to seek the Lord and, and, and pray, pray, pray in people in the house. Pray. Praying people, praying people, praying people, praying people. Oh, my, 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 see, yay, the little my God. Praying and praying for God to help. Help is coming. God's giving me the blessing. Pray, God, and thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless you. I see you, little my God. God, I thank you. I'm almost finished because it won't open my heart. Praise God and thank you. Praise him. Stand up, everyone, and begin to praise the Lord. Begin to praise the Lord and call on him. Thank you. you to grow, don't want you to prosper. But God's going to bless you anyhow. And you tell God, I thank you. God, I thank you. So, God, I'm not seeing you. are going to do it anyway. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Walk upright and be strong. He said, be strong. Be strong. Jealous is cruel as the grave. And it isn't going to get you anywhere but in hell. Praise God. Amen. Tell God thank you. Thank God for his word. Go bless him. Bless him. Yeah. 
Up this morning. 